Um, but at this point, I had done my warble up, my auto filler, I had added all of the additional details that I wanted to add. So now we're time to time to hit the paint. So for the paint, um, I started by painting a base coat of brown. Um, when I go for gold props, and this is something I learned uh, a while ago, um, if you're going for gold, it's usually best to go with something that's like a brown. Um, you can use like a, a dark, harsh, cold kind of brown, um, or you can use some of the warmer tones. Um, Brown is a really good base color for gold because what you'll find with gold paint is if you look at it from certain angles, you can see through it. Um, and that's because of the reflective nature of the, the flex in the paint. What ends up happening is at certain angles, the light will catch it and so all you see is the gold. But in other cases, when you look at it from, say, a side angle, you'll see the paint that lies underneath. So when you're working with gold paint, because your prop is supposed to be gold, um, brown's a really good base color. It's got very good coverage um, because it's a, it's a dark pigment, so you're not going to see anything. You're not going to see the craft foam or the bandages or the warbler or the filler or anything that's underneath. It's going to do a fairly good job at blocking that out. Um, you can use yellows. Um, usually plain yellow or the brighter the yellow is, the less the, the poorer the coverage is going to be. Um, so if I'm going to be using some sort of a yellow as a base coat, I usually go with an okra or some kind of a golden honey where it's a little bit darker. Again, what you're looking for is that base coverage so that if someone happens to be looking at your prop from just the right angle where the light isn't catching it, they're still going to see something that's going to make it feel like it's gold. It's going to still feel warm. Um, so I actually did two coats of brown. So my first one was a basic dark brown, and I covered the entire staff in all of the dark brown. Next, I went through with, I think it was uh, Folk Art. Um, they do uh, acrylic paints. I used a cinnamon, which is a much brighter, warmer tone. And then I painted most of the staff, if there were tiny cracks and things like that, basically where the pieces of the warbler were meeting together. Um, I didn't necessarily push the brown all the way in. Um, this helps some of the detailing pop because basically when you put the gold over it, um, if you look at it from that angle, it's going to pick up whatever color is underneath. So where there were supposed to be shadows, I wanted it to be the darker brown, but then basically everywhere else I used the light cinnamon as my base coat. Um, and then I started using gold. Um, for this particular one, I know Lulu's staff is kind of a bright, it's one of the reddish golds because golds can usually come in really kind of a cold, brassy kind of feel or kind of a warm tone. Um, the one I used is from, I believe it's Folk Art again, um, but they have something called Emperor's Gold, which is a really, um, it's, not, it's not quite red, but it's a very, very golden rich color. Um, so that was the main gold that I used, and I covered most of the staff, uh, pretty much all the staff in that color. Um, and then I used another one called Splendid Gold, which was a bit brighter. Um, because this was more, it had a more reflective quality, it was a little bit thinner, it was more of like a layer paint. Um, in that case, I, I did a dry brush over most of the, the areas where I wanted the color to pop. Um, for those who don't, are, aren't familiar with what dry brushing is, I um, recommend looking up some tutorials, but essentially it's exactly what it sounds, is you get paint on your brush, but you get enough of the paint off so that you've only got a little bit left. Um, and you don't wet the brush or anything. Um, and then basically you take the brush and then you just kind of lightly brush the surface. And what that's going to do is it's going to catch anything that's standing out. Um, so for example, on the topper, um, if I had just painted this raw gold, there would be no kind of concept of depth. So what I did here is I left it as the base gold kind of in the darker areas, but then I used more of the splendid gold kind of around the edges or around the top so that you do get a little bit of the pop. Now, I know in the pictures that, you know, some sometimes depending on the light you can catch it, sometimes you see it, um, but there's just enough so that you get more of that distinguishing quality. If you just painted everything one color, you're actually going to lose a whole lot of the detailing that you put into it. Um, and it's going to look fairly flat and two-dimensional. 
Um, so then I did splendid gold, kind of dry brush all over um, a lot of the main areas where the light is supposed to catch it. Um, and then I mixed a little bit of white in with the splendid gold to make a really, really light gold. And then I went through a lot of the edges. Um, again, edges are usually where it's going to be the brightest, um, either because they're at a really fine point or they're the ones that have seen the most wear and tear. Um, if you're thinking about a prop or a weapon that's out in the field. So basically on all the edges, I use this really bright gold in order to kind of nail it down. Um, I also, all the little fabric paint details, I also went over those with the very, very light gold as well.